Now for this project, I want to focus on seashells. And I could do a full composition, which I'll do later, of multiple shells stacked on top of each other. But for now, I'm going to simplify it. And to do this, I'm going to make a selection of the shells I want to work with. But I want to do something different. I want to take some panels and wrap them with watercolor paper. And I think it would make a very nice uh, collection of shells. And I could always move them around or change them. And that way, it's easy to focus on one or two at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and put these over to the side for one second. The other thing that inspired me to do this was I had a ton of these little canvases that uh, that I don't use because I don't do uh, acrylic painting. I actually got them for my granddaughter, so I'm going to use these. And all I have to do is I could go ahead and try to put the paper on top. The problem with that is I don't want it to uh, stay damp longer than I'd like. So you can do it both ways if you'd like. I'm just going to remove the canvas. Just, I'm not going to be graceful. Just going to get rid of it. I'm going to leave all those staples in. Let's just get rid of it. Now, if you want to leave the canvas on, you can. But what I'm really thinking about is the drying time. And I don't really need this. And I haven't experimented with leaving this on. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and give that a try. So here we have one canvas here. I've got a pretty dirty top up here. So I'm going to go ahead and lay a towel down. And this may look dirty, but it isn't. So I'm just going to lay that down. And then what I have here is just a little piece of gator board. And I'll put my watercolor paper on top. Now this is 140 pound Fabriano paper. And I wanted to try this because it has a softer size surface. And I'm choosing the 140 because I want it to be a bit more pliable. So I'm going to look at what side of the paper do I want to use. I'll probably use the top side here. Either side will work. And I could use a sponge to wet the back, but I am not trying to lift any of the water up. I just want a bit more of a puddle. I don't want to touch the surface that much. I could go ahead and use a hockey brush, but I may have some color in there. Uh, and to avoid that, I could use a paper towel. Honestly, any paper towel will do. And I could try the hockey brush. I just need to make sure. Now that's got a little bit of pigment in it, so I don't want to use that. So I'll use clean water. Move this over to the side. Clean water right here. And I'm just going to use the paper towel. Now remember, you can use a brush if you want. But uh, I don't want to risk any uh, color. And for this particular painting, it's really not going to matter if I have a little bit of color, but I don't want to get into the practice of it. Just get some water on here. And the reason for this is it's doing two things. It's going to break down the sizing on the surface. And what will happen is once you apply the color, it shouldn't lighten as much once that sizing is removed. But really, the idea of why I'm doing this is that I want my paper to be more pliable. Okay, I'm just going to turn that around. And the advantage of using a gator board instead of just the towel or the table surface, not only you don't have to worry about maybe some oils or anything like that, this stays wet a little longer. And the reason why I'm not using a corrugated board or corrugated plastic is because I don't want a pattern to develop. Then I'll take my little bar here. 
The other reason why I'm using this is because I think it's probably a better deal, maybe. But uh, the real reason is I just had a ton of these. So I'm going to go ahead, turn this around, move this over to the side, and I'll want to trim off the extra. So maybe about here should be fine. And the reason why I'm using a scissors instead of tearing it is because it's damp, so it's not going to tear very well at all. We're so going to go ahead and lay that down. Then I'll just make sure that both sides can reach over the bars, just like that. Okay, we want to make sure that both sides can come over. Then I'm going to find the middle and I'm going to use a staple gun with about 5 16 staples. And we're going to lay that down. Now, other people may have a different way of doing this, and you will find the way that you like the best for yourself. Then I could just turn it over like that, but I think I want to get a good stretch. So I'll go like this, pull it, and pull it again. it again. It's really not that difficult. Now there's different ways we can handle the uh, excess here. I think this time what I'm going to do is fold it over here like I'm doing a little package just like that. Hold it over. Now we don't want to go down like that. That's going to be too much extra paper there. I'm going to end up folding it over here. I'll do the same thing on this side. Actually, maybe it's better if I just turn it this way, a little easier to reach. And to make it uh, not worried about it uh, having the excess, I'm going to go ahead and just staple that down. Push this and staple that. Okay, and then pull it tight. Do the same thing here. Now this will work really well for any painting you want to do if you don't want to frame without glass. Now here's one thing I just noticed. I have a little bit of space here, a little air. If I want it to be tighter, I'm going to pull that down and then fold this over. Then once that dries, it should be tight. So then we just need to wait and let that dry.